in my contribution, sir, I will briefly speak about the law and order situation in the country and how it leads people to leave our beloved nation and the impacts of migration on Fiji. Mr. Speaker, sir, a 10% increase in overall crime for the month of January this year is alarming. There is a serious concern about the worrying increase in crimes against women and a significant increase in the number of illicit drug, drug cases registered. Crimes against women recorded a 31% increase with 252 cases received in January 2024, compared to the number recorded for the same period last year. Of the 252 cases, 17% were committed in the domestic setting, primarily by spouses or partners, and women between the ages of 18 to 38 represented the largest number of victims. Mr. Speaker, sir, it is also worrying that assault causing actual bodily harm cases involving women increased from 139 cases recorded for the month of January 2023 to 167 cases for the same period this year, and rape cases rose from 14 to 35 cases, with some reports recording multiple counts. During the month of January, the most prevalent <coughs> offences were assault causing actual bodily harm, 315 cases, theft, 280 cases, unlawful possession of illicit drugs, 153 cases, burglary and aggravated burglary, 138 cases, and criminal intimidation, 84 cases. Mr. Speaker, sir, I remember in the last session of Parliament when I raised that there is a significant increase in the crime rate, the Finance Minister replied, and I quote, I don't know where he is getting the figures from, unquote. These are the official figures released by the Acting Commissioner of Police. And I was observing while my colleague, Honorable Korel Vassar, was speaking, uh, Professor Prasad was saying lies, lies. Let me remind him that we all know, we all know who the liar is. We, we all know who the liar is, say. In fact, you are a professional liar. And, I, and in, in fact, if I call you, uh, I will not be wrong if I say that you are the professor of liars. Sir, one may ask, what is the reason for the huge statistical increase? And the simple answer is, it reaffirms and reflects the way the coalition government has performed in the last 14 months. This reflects the lack of faith the Fijian people have in the government of the day. When the government does not respect the law, people also feel they can do the same. And with the public's dissatisfaction with the authorities, a lot of crimes are not reported. Mr. Speaker, sir, the acting police commissioner agrees there is nepotism, backbiting, and mistrust within the force. According to the acting commissioner, these things happen when there is a lack of trust within certain groups focusing on their own personal agendas. What personal agendas are we talking about? Taking revenge? Recruiting your families and promoting your friends within the force? These appointments involving party supporters, sympathizers, financiers, and unsuccessful election candidates indicate the government's attempt to exert control over governance structures. Such, appoint such appointments discriminate against qualified individuals who lack political backing. My colleagues have spoken about these civil service appointments, boards, special administrators. I'll just give one example of the appointment of the advisory councillors. We were told that the advisory councillors would be elected. I, it happened, I happened to be in the West last week, sir, and I met a group of friends who told me one advisory councillor, he went to live in that area just over a month. He was renting there just over a month, and he was appointed the advisory councillor. We understand the advisory councillors need to know the people in the area. They need to know the area itself. They need to know the problems faced by the people in that area. But such, there are many examples I can give, sir. But this guy was appointed because he is a supporter of a particular party in government. Mr. Speaker, sir, political appointments erode trust in the existing systems and processes. And this adversely affects service delivery, institutional strength, and leads to brain drain. 
Fiji National Provident Fund has noted an increase in migration withdrawals last year. It has been revealed that the migration withdrawals reached up to 83.8 .8 million last year. In 2022, it was 42.9 million. The increase in the migration withdrawals basically shows the movement of our people abroad for better prospects. The steady erosion of the talented, highly skilled portion of, of the population is devastating. While Fiji has historically been a migrant recipient country, during the last four decades, the reverse has been the case. Emigrants from Fiji were estimated to exceed 222,000 in mid-2019, and almost all were in four countries, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, and the United States of America. Permanent migration in the 1970s through to the early 2000s to Pacific Rim countries, largely Fijians of Indian descent, contributed to declining growth rates in Fiji's population and shifts in the ethnic composition of the country. During the waves of emigration that followed many coups in the 1980s and 2000s, skilled workers and professionals fled vital sectors like education, engineering, and healthcare, causing skills shortages. Migration has also resulted in societal issues, including family dissolution, a decrease in the proportion of young people from rural areas, and changes to community and family structures. Mr. Speaker, sir, let me talk about some of the reasons for brain drain. The presence of better career possibilities abroad can cause a brain drain. We can create those opportunities here too, but we don't promote the experience or the qualified people. We promote our friends. Opportunities for growth, such as greater jobs, higher living standards, and easier access to housing and healthcare. How can we have higher living standards when the cost of living has really gone up? Before the election, people were promised that the prices of goods and services will go down. But as soon as the government came in, 15% bet, sir. We all know that. Educational advancement and innovation. What is, what is there for those who do not qualify for the universities? Political unrest and instability. Persecution based on sexual orientation, gender, religion, and political affiliation. We can see the cases of former prime minister, former AG, and former commissioner of police. We all know that, what's happening. Insecurity and safety are threatened. I've already spoken about the increase in the crime rate, sir. Mr. Speaker, sir, let me now inform the people of Fiji about the effects, causes of brain drain. Brain drain represents the biggest threat to a country's population its negative impact on the economy, economy, leading to poor standard of living, including poverty, poor health, lower quality goods and services, the departure of skilled professionals creates a shortage of expertise within crucial sectors such as healthcare, engineering, technology, and education. There is, there is a lot of shortage. Say, uh, last week I, I happened to visit a government hospital. I went to see a doctor, and this lady doctor, she was so kind. She had to do, do my diabetes, my pressure, apart from the normal checkup I went to. And then she told me we are facing shortages. So this is, I really appreciate what these doctors or nurses or the professionals are doing. They are going out of their way to look after their patients. We really appreciate that. But for how long they will carry on this workload, say? Out of frustration, they will resign and go. So we need to correct that, sir. We need to correct that, sir.